Developers love to put the blame on everybody but themselves. When their title fails, it's because of racism, sexism, or toxic gamers. And that's exactly what's happening right now because apparently Ubisoft developers have revealed the company brushes off legitimate criticism as toxic gamer talk. I have a few different things to show off, but before I get into the topic, if you enjoy the content I create, check out the links in the description, join the community in my live stream, and consider supporting through Patreon or YouTube memberships. Now, it's no surprise to hear that Ubisoft is kind of in chaos right now. They are trying their best to figure out how to deal with the backlash surrounding games like Assassin's Creed Shadows, and it hasn't particularly worked, but it seems that they just do not understand that they need to take accountability for the fact that their titles are failing or they appear like they're going to be failing. This is a That Park Place article that says, alleged Ubisoft developers claim that the company either ignores legitimate criticism of its business practices and games or brushes it off as, quote, toxic gamer talk. They also claim that the company's DEI policies have led to a loss of talent in both technical expertise as well as creativity. A YouTuber, Legendary Drops, reports he spoke with a number of developers and specifically specifically asked one how Ubisoft internalizes and discusses general criticism from players and the rest of the industry. And of course, take this all with a grain of salt. We do not have exact names. We do not know for certain that these are, you know, legitimate reports, but it doesn't seem that far-fetched because we know that there are people at Ubisoft who hate our guts. So many people within the industry hate gamers, but they still expect to make money off of us, which is just insanity, though the developer responded, at a high level, they rarely talk about it. At a project level, they brush it off as toxic gamer talk. As Asmund Gold correctly pointed out in one of his videos, Ubisoft is filled with toxic positivity that prevents growth. That is, yeah, a big problem within the industry right now. There are people who do not know how to say no. They want to foster this positive environment, but then when you start questioning the direction a game is going in and you start questioning how the project is turning out, they shut that conversation down because it's negative and it's not helpful. But that's the point of having so many people on a project, not only to create it, but also to have all of those opinions, to have that extremely valuable feedback and that's why I constantly criticize companies for shutting down consumers who want to simply talk about a product because you're trying to sell us a game, so you should listen to our feedback for that game, but they don't. They think they know what is right, they think they know what is correct, and that's why so many games are failing now. The Flintlock Sieges of Dawns, the Suicide Squad Killed the Justice Leagues, the Skull and Bones, you're not listening to our criticisms and you're not trying to make a game that people actually want to play. And it seems that the developers at the companies are now having problems themselves. I can't say I feel that bad though. To be honest, you still work for a company like this. You're still working with activists. This is what happens when we do not shut down these people who do not care about video games from entering the industry. After being asked about Japanese gamers sharing their own criticisms of Shadows, the developer stated the criticisms uh, haven't been talked about and Ubisoft only issued demands that we mustn't engage with discussion on that topic publicly. They're panicking. They know that people are upset. They know that this game is going to struggle and that's probably why they delayed it and to talk it off, which I do still think is mighty suspicious, is the fact that they're only delaying it by a couple of months, yet they are refunding everyone. Imagine if every time Cyberpunk 2077 was delayed, CD Projekt Red refunded every single person's pre-orders. That's just not, you know, industry standard. That's not an a practice that we see happen all that often. I, of course, am fine with people getting their money back if a product is not done 100%, but 
it's only being delayed by a couple months, which to me screams that they are not actually going to release it in February. But hearing this, that at the project level, they brush it off as toxic gamer talk just continues to confirm the fact that these activists who work for these companies hate our guts. And it's so sad to hear because I want games to be amazing. I want Ubisofts to make good games. I want Assassin's Creed's to be the way that they originally were. But these people are infecting the industry and they hate us. They do not want us to have content that we want. They don't want us to be able to discuss what we like and dislike about a project because they think they know what's best, which is just absurd. And of course, the article goes on to state, this is not unheard of. Firewalk Studios and PlayStation engaged in a similar practice with Concord. After significant backlash to the game being showcased during a PlayStation State of Play presentation at the end of May, Firewalk Studios director of IP, Kim Cranes, eventually addressed in an interview with VGC nearly a month later saying, yeah, that trailer, that moment is such a tiny slice of everything that we've been working on for years and we're excited for the game and the IP and for the game to be in people's hands, the IP to be in people's minds. And then she talked about how she had years of plans and how you were going to see these characters' stories unfold and their backstories. And, you know, you only saw a small bit of what the game had to offer, so you shouldn't be judging it yet. And, well, it doesn't seem like that went over particularly well, given it was shut down two weeks after release. And I do think that this is their attempt to try to kill some of the backlash surrounding Shadows, but it's not going to work. It doesn't matter if you delay this game by five years, people are still going to remember it. It doesn't matter if you try not to talk about the game because you don't want to engage with, quote, toxic gamers. We're going to still criticize. You can't silence all of us. And all you're going to do at the end of the day is lose money. And this is sad to me because I want Assassin's Creed to be great. I want every single game to release and for it to be fantastic, but that's just not going to happen when you have people like this who are actively disregarding what we are saying. And this does seem that, uh, you know, it's just another piece of the puzzle as to why Ubisoft is struggling so much right now internally. They don't want to discuss the problems. And there are even people at the company who are either straight up lying or are idiots and don't understand the problem with the industry because the Ubisoft CEO had recently claimed that the company's goal is not to push any specific agendas, even though that is a straight up lie. He's either stupid and doesn't understand that this is going on in their content, which I highly doubt, or he's straight up lying to investors because he doesn't want to lose their money. We see the stocks are tanking. They are dropping off of a cliff. And then he says something like this, even though the company's website straight up says that they hire certain people and the products they create push agendas because they have certain quotas that they want to fulfill in order to accurately represent all types of people in the content they're producing. So Ubisoft's kind of screwed right now. No matter what they say or what they do, it's not going to look good for them. And now we're hearing that reportedly the company brushes off legitimate criticism as toxic gamer talk, which doesn't sound all that shocking, at least in my opinion, but it's still disappointing to hear for a couple of people, I'm sure, given the history that Ubisoft has, all of their great IPs, or at least their once great IPs. So I, of course, will be keeping my eye on Assassin's Creed Shadows, seeing if any other developers come out and make any statements. But for now, that's all that I really had to discuss in this video. Let everyone know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this, give it a like. And if you didn't, give it a dislike. I appreciate your support either way, but I will talk to you all again in the next video really soon.